Hi all, this is Harrison from Langchain. Today we released a blog about how Dosu, a code engineering teammate, improved some of their application performance by 30% without any prompt engineering. And it's using a lot of the tools that we've built at Langchain over the past few months. And so today in this video, I wanna walk through roughly how they did that and walk through a tutorial that will teach you how you can do it on your application as well. So specifically what they used was LangSmith. And so LangSmith is our separate platform. It's separate from LangChain, the open source. It actually works with and without LangChain. And actually Dosu doesn't use LangChain, but they use LangSmith. And what LangSmith is, is a combination of things that can be aimed at improving the data flywheel of your application. And so this generally consists of a few things. This generally consists of logging and tracing all the data that goes through your applications, testing and evaluation, and Lance is doing a whole great series on that right now. There's a prompt hub, there's some human annotation cues, but the real power of LangSmith comes from the fact that these aren't all separate things. These are all together in one platform. And so you can set up a really nice flywheel of data to, to start improving the performance of your application. So let's see what exactly that means. There's a tutorial that we put together that walks through in similar steps some of the same things that Dosu did to achieve a 30% increase. Um, and, and the task that they did it for was classification, um, which is a relatively simple task by LLM standards. But let's take a look at what exactly it involves. So we're just gonna walk through the tutorial. The first thing we're gonna do is set up some environment variables here. These, This is how we're gonna log uh, data to our LangSmith project. I'm gonna call it classifier uh, demo, um, set that up. Let me, let me restart my kernel, clear all previous ones, now set that up, awesome. So this is the simple application that mimics uh, some of what uh, Dosu did. Um, so if we take a look at it, um, we can see that we're using OpenAI. We're not even using LangChain. We're just using OpenAI client directly. And we're basically doing a classification task. We've got this like F string prompt template thing that's classified the type of the issue as one of the following topics. We've got the topics up here, bug, improvement, new feature, documentation, or integration. We then put the issue text. Um, and, and then we really just wrap this in the LangSmith traceable. This just will trace things nicely to LangSmith. Um, and this is, our, this is our application. If we try it out, we can see that it does some classification steps. So if I paste in this issue, fix bug in LCell, I would expect this to be classified as a bug. And we can see indeed that it is. Um, and if I if I do something else, like let's do now uh, like fix bug in documentation. So this is slightly trickier because it touches on two concepts. It touches on bug and it touches on documentation. Now in the LangChain repo, we would want this to be classified as a documentation related issue. But we can see that off the bat, our prompt template classifies it as a bug. Adding even more complexity in here, the fact that we want it classified as documentation is something that's maybe a little bit unique to us. If, if Pydantic or some other project was doing this, maybe they would want this to be classified as a bug. And so Devin at Dosu has a, has a really hard job of, of trying to build something that'll work for both us and Pydantic. And part of the, the way that he's able to do that is by starting to incorporate some feedback from us as end users into his application. So one of the things that you can do in uh, laying Smith is leave feedback associated with runs. Um, so for this first run that gets a positive score, so if we if we run this again, notice one of the things that we're doing is we're passing in this run ID. Um, and so this run ID is basically a UUID that we're passing in. The reason that we're creating it up front is so that we can associate feedback with it over time. Um, so if we run this, and then if we create our LangSmith client, and if we create the feedback associated with this, this is a pretty good one. So we can assume that that it's been marked as good. Um, we've collected this in some way. If you're using like the GitHub interface, that might be, you know, they, they don't change the label. They think it's good. And so we'll mark this as user score one. 
and we're using the run ID that we create above and pass in. So we're using this to collect feedback. Now we've got this follow-up, fixed bugging documentation. It creates the wrong uh, kind of like label. We can leave feedback on that as well. So we can now call this create feedback function. And notably, we're leaving a correction. So, so uh, this key can be anything. I'm just calling it correction to line up. But then instead of passing in score, as we do up here, I'm passing in this correction value. And this correction value is something that's a first, uh, first class citizen in Langsmith to denote the corrected values of what a run should be. And so this should be documentation. And let's assume that I've gotten this feedback somehow. Maybe as an end user, I correct the label in, in GitHub to have it say documentation instead of bug. So let's log that to Langsmith. Okay, awesome. So this is generally like what I set up in my code. I now need to do a few things in Langsmith in order to take advantage of this data flywheel. So let's switch over to Langsmith. I can see I've got this classifier demo project. If I click in, I can see the runs that I just ran. If I click into a given run, I can see the inputs, I can see the output, I can click into feedback, and I can see any feedback. So here I can see correction, and I can see the correction of documentation. If I go to the run below, I can see that I've got a score of one because this is the input that was fixed bug and else cell and output of that. Okay, awesome. So I have this data in here, I've got the feedback in here. Let's start to set up some automation. And what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna move data that has feedback associated with it into a data set. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to, I'm going to click add a rule. I'm going to call this positive, positive feedback. I'm going to assist sampling rate of one. I'm going to add a filter. Um, I'm going to add a filter of where feedback is user score is one. Um, and I can see that actually, actually, let me switch on my view so I can see one thing, I can, one thing that's nice to do is just preview what the filters that you add to the rule are actually going to do. So I can do that here. I can go filter, feedback, user score, one, and I can see that when applied, this applies to one run. So I can basically preview my filters here. I can now click add rule. It remembers that filter. Let's call this positive feedback. And if I get this positive feedback, I just want to add it to a data set. So I just want to add it to a data set. Let me create a new one. Let me name it uh, classifier demo. Um, it's going to be a key value data set, which basically just means it's going to be dictionaries in, dictionaries out. And let me create this. And I've now got this rule. Um, I am not going to click use correction here because remember, this is the positive feedback that I'm collecting. Okay, great. Let's save that. Now let's add another rule. Let's go back here. Let's remove this filter and let's add another filter, which is instead when it has corrections. So now I'm saying anytime there's corrections, I can see the filter applied again. Go here, add rule. I can now, uh, let's call it negative feedback. I'm going to add it to a data set. Let's call it classifier demo. And now I'm going to click use corrections because now when this gets added to the data set, I want it to basically use the corrections instead of the true value. So let's save this. And now I've got two rules. Awesome. Okay, so now I've got these rules set up. These rules only apply to data points and feedback that are logged after they are set up. So let's go in here. And we basically need to rerun and, and have these same data points in there so that the rules can pick them up. So let's run this. This is the one with positive feedback, so let's leave that correction. Let's rerun this. This is the one with negative feedback, so let's leave that correction. Um, and now, basically, we need to wait for the rules to trigger. By default, they run every five minutes. We can see now that it is 11.58, just 11.59. And so this will trigger in about a minute. So I'm going to pause the video and wait for that to trigger. All right, so we're back. It's just after noon, which means the rules should have run. The way I can see if this happened, by the way, I can click on rules. I can go see logs. So I can see logs and I can see that there was one rule um, or there was one run that was triggered by this rule. I can go to the other one. I can see, again, there was one run that was triggered by this rule. And so basically that's how I can tell if these rules were run and what data points they were run over. So now that they've been run, I can go to my data sets and testing 
I can search for classify or demo. I can look in and I can see that I have two examples. I have this fixed bug in Elsa with the output of bug. And so this is great. This is just the, the original output. And then I also have this other one, fixed bug in documentation with this new output of documentation. And this is the corrected value. So we can see that what I'm doing is I'm building up this data set of correct values. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those data points in my application to improve its performance. So let's see how to do that. And so we can go back to this nice little guide we've got. It walks through the automations here. And now we've got some new code for our application. So let's pull it down and let's take a look at what's going on. So we've got the Langsmith client and we're gonna need this for our application because now we're pulling down these, uh, these examples in the data set. I've got this little function. This little function is gonna take in examples and it's basically gonna create a string that I'm gonna put into the prompt. So it's basically gonna create a string that's just alternating inputs and then outputs. Super easy. And, and that's, that's honestly most of the new code. This is all same code as before. Here we change the prompt template. So we add these two lines here. Here are some examples and then a placeholder for examples. Okay, and we'll see how we use that later on. And now what we're doing is inside this function, we're pulling down all the examples that are part of this classifier demo um, project. So I'm listing examples that belong to this data set. And then uh, by default, it returns an iterator. So I'm calling list on it to get a concrete list. I'm passing that list into my uh, function that I defined above, create example string. And then I'm formatting the prompt by passing in uh, the examples variable to be this example string. All right, so let's now try this out with the same input as before. So if we scroll up and we take this same input, fix bug in documentation, and if we run it through this new method, we can see that we get back documentation. Notice here that the input is the same as before. So it's just learning that if it has the exact same input, then it should output the same output. The thing that we're doing by using this as a few shot example is it can also generalize to other inputs. So if we change this to like address bug in documentation, we can see that that's still classified as documentation. There's still these conflicting kind of like bug and documentation ideas, but it's learning from the example and it's learning that this should be documentation. Um, let's see what some other, okay. So now, you know, like, does this fix all issues? No, let's, let's try out some things like make improvement in documentation. Is this going to be classified as a improvement or as documentation? So it's classified as improvement. We probably want it to be classified as documentation. So one thing we can do is we can leave more feedback for it. And so this, this imitates exactly what would happen um, in real life in GitHub issues. Like you would keep on seeing these new types of questions that come in that aren't exactly the same as previous inputs because obviously they're not. And then you can start to capture that as feedback and use them as examples to improve your application. And so we can create more feedback for, for this run. Like, hey, we want this to be about documentation. Great. So that's a little bit about how we can start to capture these examples, use them as few shot examples, have the model learn from previous patterns about what it's, about what it's seen. The last cool thing that uh, Dosu did that I'm not going to walk through, in, or I'm not going to replicate it in code, but I'll walk through it is they basically did a semantic search over examples. And so what is this and why did they do this? First, they did this because they were getting a lot of feedback. So they had hundreds of data points of good and corrected feedback that they they were logging to Langsmith. And so at some point it becomes too much to pass in hundreds or thousands of examples. So rather what they wanted to do was they only wanted to pass in like five or 10 examples. But they didn't want to just pass in five or 10 random examples. What they wanted to do was pass in the examples that were most similar to the current input. And so the rationale there is that if you look for examples that are similar to the input, the outputs should also be similar-ish, or there should be like the, the logic that applies to those inputs should be similar to the logic that applies to the new input. So basically what they did was they, they took all the examples um, they created embeddings for all of them. They then took the incoming uh, kind of, uh, uh, they, they took the incoming input, created embeddings for that as well, and then basically found the examples that were most similar to that. And so this was a really cool way to have 
thousands of examples, but still only use five or 10 for your application for a given point in time. Hopefully this is a nice overview of how you can start to really build the feedback loop. You can capture feedback associated with runs and store those in the Langsmith. You can set up automations to move those runs and sometimes their feedback as well to create data sets of good examples. And you can then pull those examples down into your application and use that to improve the performance going forward. Doing this with classification is a relatively simple example. However, there are lots more complex examples that we think these same exact concepts can be relevant for. And so we're very excited to try those out. If you have any questions or if you want to explore this more, please get in touch. We'd love to help.